was turned away from the lodging house she'd been staying at. She shared a room with three other women, but that night she didn't have the money for a bed. Fourpence. According to the people who saw her there, she'd been drinking, but she wasn't drunk. She went off saying, I'll soon get my DOS money. See what a jolly bonnet I've got now. Apparently she had a bonnet nobody had seen her wearing before. She was still trying to earn a fourpence when she met Emily Holland. About half past two, I was coming home from the fire, which I'd been to see at Radcliffe. I see her at the corner of Osborne Street, Whitechapel Road. Just outside a grocery shop. She was on her own. She was the was for drink. She was staggering a bit. We were talking for seven or eight minutes. And while we were talking, the clock at Whitechapel Church struck half past two. I tried to persuade her to come home with me as she was the worst for drink. And I would find her lodgings where I lived in, but she wouldn't come. She said, she said, I've had my lodging money three times today and I've spent it. And she turned towards Whitechapel and went down there. She didn't say she was meeting anyone. She said she had any money and that she must make up the amount of her lodging. She said, it won't be long before I'll be back. I was proceeding down Buckrow Whitechapel, going towards Brady Street at 3.45 a.m. on the morning of Friday, August 31st. There was not a soul about. I'd been there half an hour previous, and I saw no one then. I was on the right-hand side of the road when I noticed a figure lying in the street. It was dark at the time, though there was a street lamp shining at the end of the road. I went across and found deceased lying outside a gateway, a head towards the east. The gateway was closed. Deceased was lying lengthways along the street, her left hand touching the gate. I examined the body by the aid of my lamp and noticed blood oozing from a wound in the throat. She was lying on her back with her clothes disarranged. I felt her arm, which was quite warm from the joints upwards. Her bonnet was off and lying by her side, close to the left hand. Her eyes were wide open. I heard a constable pass in Brady Street, so I called him. I said, run for Dr. Llewellyn. The doctor arrived in a very short time. He looked at the woman and then he said, move the woman to the mortuary. She's dead. I'll make a further examination. We then placed her on the ambulance and moved her there. Inspector Spratling came to the mortuary and while taking a description of the deceased, turned up her clothes and found that she was disemboweled. Dark Annie. Well, the Star newspaper called her a defenceless walker of the street. The Daily Chronicle was rougher and said she was of the unfortunate class and was particularly well known as a haunter of the low public houses in the vicinity. Height, five foot, age, about 45. She had a friend called Amelia Palmer. She was the widow of Frederick Chuck. He died about 18 months ago. She'd been living apart from him for the past four years, mainly in the lodging houses. I saw her several times last week. She said she did not feel well, so she'd go into the casual ward and try and pull round. I'll give her tuppence to bark up a tea. And I told her not to get any rum, cos I'd frequently seen her the worse for drink. I'm afraid she used to earn her living partly on the streets. Well, she was a very straightforward woman when she was sober, clever and industrious with a needle, but she couldn't take much drink. She'd been leading a very irregular life all the time I'd known her. My name is Timothy Donovan. I am the deputy of a common lodging house at 35 Dorset Street, Spitterfield. It was about seven o'clock that Friday. Annie Chapman came to the lodging house and asked me if I'd let her go down into the kitchen. I asked her where she'd been all week, and she said, in the infirmary. I then let her go into the kitchen, stay there until just before two o'clock next morning. When she went out, she said, I haven't any money now, but don't let the bed, I I'll be back soon. She then left the house. She had had enough to drink but she was well able to walk straight. My name is John Richardson. I'm a porter at Spitalfields Market. I helped my mother in her packing case business at 29 Ambury Street. I was at the house on Saturday morning. I got there between a quarter and 10 minutes to five. I lifted the latch and went through the passage to the yard. The door was closed. I opened it, but I didn't go into the yard. I sat on the doorstep and cut a piece of leather off my boot with an old table knife which I bought from home. I was there about a minute and a half or two minutes at the outside. It was beginning to get light, but not thoroughly. I could see all over. 
I couldn't have failed to have noticed a dead woman if she had been lying there. I was sitting on the second step with my feet on the flags of the yard, quite close to where the woman was found. Albert Kadosh, I live at number 27, Albrist. Number 27 is next door to number 29. On Saturday, I got up about a quarter past five and went into the yard. It was then about 20 past five. As I returned towards the back door, I heard a voice say, no. Just as I was going through the door, it was not in our yard, but I should think it was in the yard of number 29. I went indoors, but I went back out to the yard uh, about three or four minutes later. As I was going back, I heard a sort of fall against the fence. It seems as if something touched the fence suddenly. I didn't look to see what it was, and I didn't hear any other noise. I then went in the house and out into the street to go to work. It was about uh, two minutes after half past five, as I passed Spitalfield Church. I was passing down Hanbury Street from home, going to Spitalfield Market. It was about 5.30. I'm certain of the time because the brewer's clock had just struck as I passed 29 Hanbury Street. I was on the right-hand side of the street, the same side as number 29. I saw a man and woman on the pavement talking. The man's back was turned towards Brick Lane and the woman's towards Spitalfield Market. They were talking together and were close up against the shutters in number 29. I saw the woman's face. I've since seen the dead woman in the mortuary and I'm sure it's the face of the same person I saw in Hanbury Street. I couldn't see the man's face except to notice he was dark. He had a brown deer stalker hat and I think he had a dark coat on, but I'm not quite sure about that. I couldn't say what age he was, but he looked over 40 and he looked a little taller than the woman. He looked like a foreigner. He had a shabby, genteel appearance. I could hear them talking loudly. He says to her, will you? She said, yes. They were still standing there as I passed. I didn't look back. Ceremony. Even the ritual of these murders. How do you mean? Do you remember Dr. Phillips? I found a small piece of coarse muslin and a pocket comb in a paper case lying at the feet of the woman. They had apparently been placed there in order or arranged there.